lie down on your back, but please lie on your back so that the top of your head is towards the front of the room and the soles of your feet are towards the back of the room. Now, uh, those of you who have had functional integration lessons, you know just to take it easy. Um, don't do anything that um, you feel is not appropriate. Please roll to one side, come up to sit. Sit facing the back of the room. Bend both of your legs, put the soles of your feet on the floor and lean on the floor behind you with your hands. And slowly, attentively, start to tilt your legs right and left. Nothing tricky, just, just tilt them right and left. <laughs> You're laughing. You're anticipating. No, nothing tricky, really. Nothing tricky. Just to them right and left. And uh, stay leaning on your hands. And as you tilt your legs right and left, consider this question. How far apart would the feet need to be for you to be able to lower your legs all the way and for the right knee to touch the left foot and for the left knee to touch the right foot? And each one of you, that distance will be a little different depending on, on the length of your legs and the different lengths of your thighs and your lower legs. So really, the structure will determine what that is, the size of your pelvis, the distance between your hip joints, so many factors. But all you need to know is whether that is possible and going to happen or not. <laughs> you'll need to find out how far away from your pelvis do your feet need to be for that to happen. <laughs> you okay? Glass of water? <laughs> That's good. Now, notice when you have to lift one of your hands and let the hand lift at the appropriate moment. And you're looking for a distance between the feet where one knee could touch the other foot. In other words, land on the floor next to the sole of the other foot and then the other way around. Oh, beautiful. Then don't lift your hands. Yeah, if you can leave your hands on the floor, by all means, leave your hands on the floor, but just keep tilting your legs right and left and keep making that inquiry. Could my feet be a bit closer to my buttocks, a little further away from my buttocks? Is it easier if the toes are slightly pointed outwards or pointed inwards? In other words, pigeon toe. And those of you that can't sustain having your hands behind, there's a moment that you'll feel the hand needs to lift, let it lift. 
and then return it. And some of you might find that your pelvis starts to creep away from your hands. <laughs> so oh, it's like I'm right forward here. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. So you're going to have to make an adjustment every now and then to bring your pelvis back. Now, once you've found that distance, yep, once you've found that distance and you know what that distance is, to keep your legs in that position, stay leaning on your hands, and now slowly start to lower your legs to the side and then quickly bring them back to the middle. But if you can't get them all the way, it doesn't matter. But slowly lower them down to the side and quickly bring them back to the middle and then slowly lower them down to the side and quickly bring them back to the middle. Both sides. So left and right. Quickly, slowly to the down and quickly to the middle. Now, quickly and slowly are relative terms. Even though I articulated it quickly, it doesn't have to be quickly. It could be slowly down to the side. Yeah, can you see there's just a difference in tempo between the two? Just so that you can make a distinction between slow and quick. And it's, it's a bit of a tricky thing because how do you not overshoot the middle? because you're coming back quick and then you don't want to overshoot the middle. So how do you slow yourself down to then go in the other direction? Hmm, interesting, control, yeah? Now reverse that. Quickly to the floor and slowly to the middle. And remember, the two speeds are relative to each other. You don't have to go maxed out speed down to the floor. Matter of fact, I'd advise you not to do that. <laughs> don't max out. But do be able to tell the difference between one speed and the other. Faster the floor, slower return. Faster the floor, slower return. Now, if you're going faster the floor, that means you're going faster than the speed of gravity will take you down. That means you're doing muscular work. And I go fast left and right. Okay, is that the sound of two thighs thumping? <laughs> oh, well, that's what I heard. <laughs> so, woof, woof. Now, do you see how you're moving your feet? Keep the feet in place. Yeah, you can, you can roll over the soles of the feet, but don't let them displace left and right a lot. Uh, well, you, you, you'll find yourself moving forward. Great. Let that be. <laughs> let that be in rest. The sound of two thighs thumping. <laughs> be Why should you blame him? It came out of my mouth, formulated in my brain. But as a response to an external stimulus in the environment. <laughs> yeah. You've got to own what you say, right? got to own what you say. 
but I'm glad you've got a sense of humor. Please roll to one side, come up to sitting. And arrange your legs in that same fashion, wide enough apart so that if you tilted your legs to the right, the left knee would come into contact with the sole of the right foot. And please go ahead and do that slowly, slowly, slowly. Lower your legs to the right, lower them to the right, lower them to the right, until they're resting on the floor completely. And then you can lean on the floor in front of your legs with your left hand, not with your right hand, sorry. You lean on the floor in front. Where's front? Front. Yeah, absolutely. So here, so here we, uh, this is intentional, right? So here is where you encounter which front are we talking about? The front of your body or the front of the room? And can you see how quickly confusion arises when you don't have the two? So let me be more specific. Put your right hand on the floor, somewhere in front of your legs. And now place your left hand on the floor also, but use your right hand as support. And slowly start to slide that left hand further forwards of, of yourself, or um, to Richard, your body. <laughs> <laughs> slide your hand forward of your body, not forward in the room, but forward of your body, and then come back. And uh, I know last week you were cleaning the floor and chopping, you know, scything things, but here, just think of sliding your hand on the floor and coming back and go in slightly different directions, sometimes forwards and a little bit to the left, sometimes forwards and a little bit to the right. And you can adjust where that right hand is for support. That's important because that will allow you to keep the trunk available for movement. So even in a crazy position like this, there is a posture that you can be in that allows for movement rather than inhibits movement. forwards and back and then off to the right sometimes, off to the left sometimes and find out in which direction can you go in that will allow you to take the hand the furthest forwards but with ease. So that's what you're looking for. Which trajectory along the floor will allow me to get the furthest, but without any increase in effort. And then once you've found that place, leave your left hand at that place. And with your hand at that place, not changing it, Start to move your head as if you wanted to put it underneath your left arm. So the hand stays where it is. And you go to move your head as if you wanted to put it underneath that left arm. So you can look to the other side and go, hello. Now, if you have that other arm, your right hand, in just the right place, notice how you can use it to lower yourself a little bit. But if it's not in the right place, it kind of interferes. It stops you. So where can you have that right hand where it's a help rather than a hindrance? The left arm is forwards, and you're putting your head underneath your left arm. That's it. Feel what happens 
through your trunk in the ribs, how the ribs have to move to get your head there. That's it. The left shoulder could come back. Yeah, that's nice. And now bring your head out of there. Come upright. And now let's switch over the rolls of the two hands. Support your weight on your left hand. And now start to slide the right hand forwards, 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 and then back, back, back. Forwards of your body, backwards, and then go in slightly different trajectories. Find out which trajectory makes the sliding the easiest and the furthest. That's nice. Forwards, yeah. Now remember, forwards is different from sideways. Okay, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, in a funny kind of a way, you're examining what your concept of forwards is. When, when are you not sliding your hand forwards? And these kinds of concepts, once they're learned, kind of remain unquestioned for most of our lives, unless you are that perverse kind of person that starts to study movement notation. And then, of course, <laughs> oh my God, where's forwards? Where's back? Body frame of reference, spatial frame of reference, gravity spatial reference. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leave your right arm as far forward as you can slide it with ease. And then start to introduce your head into that gap between your arm and the floor. And bring it back out again. Now, once you've placed that right hand on the floor, it stays there. Unless, of course, when you go to put your head underneath, it's so much of a strain that you can't do it. So then you readjust your hand a little bit. Yeah, be sensible about this. So as you do that, can you feel, ooh, that's a tricky one for you, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Take it easy. Right, slide the hand backwards towards yourself, come up to sitting, and then return to lying and rest. Leave your left leg long and stand your right foot. So bend your right leg, stand the right foot. And pay attention to the contact that the sole of your foot makes with the ground. Yeah. Have as vivid an impression as you can have of that foot-soul contact. And now subtly start to sway your right leg a little side to side and feel how that sole ground contact changes, how the pressure goes from the outside edge, middle of foot, inside edge, middle of foot, outside edge. Can you feel that? And you're producing that change in contact 
by intentionally swaying your leg. Okay, now, next time your right leg is vertical, stop there. Leave your knee pointing to the ceiling. Make sure that it stays pointing to the ceiling and shift the contact on your foot, outside edge, middle, inside edge, middle. Your intent is to keep the knee towards the ceiling. If it's swaying left and right, that's not it. That's it. Yeah. And you know, when you do this, am I right? When you do this, what you're finding is that there's a capacity in the joints just below your ankle to produce this same movement. That's it. If anything, you'll have this funny feeling that your knee is going up towards the ceiling and then back down again. That's it. Leave the foot and return to tilting the knee, the thigh, right and left. Mm -hmm. Now one more variation. Bring the leg to vertical. Keep the sole of the foot stuck to the floor. Don't let the pressure change. In other words, the imprint that you feel now is the imprint that remains. And now tilt your leg, your knee, right and left. Make sure that the imprint stays the same. Now, you know those joints that underneath your ankle that you were moving a moment ago? You're moving the same joints now, but it's more tricky. And one direction will definitely be easier than the other for some of you. If the weight stays the same underneath the foot, that means you are moving in these ankle, in these joints just below your ankle. Off you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Leave that rest. Please roll to one side, come up to sit. Have your legs that same distance apart where you know you can tilt them and the knee will touch the sole. Lean on the floor behind you. And now slowly, slowly tilt the legs to the left, 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 to the left. And if you need to lift, lift the arms, lift the arms off the floor. Put the left hand on the floor in front of you. Lean on the left hand. Put the right hand on the floor in front of you and start to slide that right hand forwards, 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 and then back 
back, 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 forwards and back. And every time you send that hand forwards, send it a little forwards, maybe a little bit off to the right, or sometimes a little bit off to the left, and find out what trajectory of motion along the floor allows you to get the hand forward the easiest. Please definitely, definitely play with the position of that left hand. Where can it best serve you for support? Otherwise, the muscles of the back are going to be protesting. Now, slide your right hand as far forward as is easy for you. Keep the hand there and then introduce your head into that gap between your arm and the floor without moving the hand. That's it. And notice how the trunk turns. Now, the hand that you're introducing, you know, it's, the, it's the other arm that's going under. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, your, your head's going underneath your right arm. That's it. And by putting your head under and then taking it out, each time you go under, you might find another part of yourself in your trunk that you can access to go a little bit further under. Bless you. And now take your head out of the gap come back up to sitting and now switch the roles of the hand. So now the left hand becomes the supporting hand. No, the right hand becomes the supporting hand and the left hand becomes the sliding hand. And start to slide that left hand forwards, back. You've got the idea. Now, not only will your trunk go forward, but can you feel that something happens in that relationship between the front of your hip and your thighs? Can you feel how the top of the hip bone gets closer and closer to the thigh that's lying on the floor? And that movement in there is a movement of your hip joints. So the next time that your left hand is a distance from you, that is acceptable, keep it there. And now start to introduce your head into the gap between your arm and the floor, and then take it back out again. It does, and the hand doesn't even have to be far away from you. And then take your head out of the gap, come upright again, and then lie on your back and rest. Uh, this time, Leave your right leg long and bend your left leg. And just paying attention to the contact with the floor that the sole of your left foot makes, tilt your leg right and left. The left leg, that is. And feel how that contact changes. Notice the correlation 
as your left knee goes more to the left, how you rest more onto the outside edge of the foot, that's the middle toe side. And then as your knee goes to the right, your foot tends to rest more on the inside edge, that's the big toe side. And literally you're rolling across the supporting surface of your foot. Now the next time your leg is vertical, knee pointing to the ceiling, stop there. And now keep your knee stationary in space and start to do that same movement that you're experiencing a moment ago in your foot. So slowly, slowly move the foot so that you feel the pressure go a little bit more towards the little toe side and then the big toe side. And notice the journey between the two. <laughs> yeah? So really track the change in contact between the floor and the foot as you make that journey from edge to edge. And you might feel that there's these joints underneath your ankles that allow you to do that. <laughs> and some of you might also feel that even though you're doing this movement, there's still a movement in your hip joint, even though you're not intentionally moving your hip joint with the muscles around your hip. So even in this subtle movement that you're doing here, it's pervasive. Now, leave the foot in the middle. Tilt the whole leg left and right again. Notice if that's a little different. <laughs> the sound of Velcro. Now, bring the thigh to the middle. Note the contact that your foot makes with the floor. Feel the shape, the size, the fullness of the imprint. And keeping that imprint of the foot on the floor, just like it is, more or less, plus or minus. Move your knee left and right. And if this helps some of you, you can imagine that there's a some warm, very friendly hands just coming along and just lightly wrapped on your foot and it enables you to sway the knee while those warm, friendly hands stabilize your foot. We'll get a chance to do this with each other in a moment. So don't worry. Leave that be, lengthen out your leg, rest. Roll to one side, come up to sitting. Lean on your hands behind you on the floor. Arrange your legs like you just did. And uh, with a sense of curiosity, go ahead and tilt your legs right and left and feel what's available for you now. Those of you who had to lift your hands, do you need to lift your hands as soon as you did before or is it a little bit later now? And then feel how the feet and the ankles move.
Right. Please come up to stand. Notice what it feels like to stand. Especially notice what it feels like to make contact with the floor and what it feels like around your ankles and whether there's a different sense in your trunk and the distance of your head relative to the floor. Now I promised you a longer break and the longer break you shall have. So um, please come back at a, just after just uh, about five past four, yes. So science has occurred in the room, but something that says on the floor. <laughs> <laughs>